And welcome back to News On. As we just mentioned, the White House uh, telling 11 Trump appointed members of the boards of visitors of the military service to resign by 6 p.m. or be fired. This was as of yesterday. Former White House press secretary, though, during the Trump administration, Sean Spicer. Well, he had a little something to say about that. Here is the email I received right before noon today. I am writing to request your resignation from the Board of Visitors to the United States Naval Academy. If we do not receive your resignation by the end of today, which is right now, and they won't, you will be terminated. Attached is a former letter. The letter says that the email states on behalf of President Biden, I'm requesting your resignation as a member of the Board of Visitors to the U.S. Naval Academy. Lindsay, remember back during the inauguration when President Biden said, I'm going to be the president for all people, Trump voters, everyone else? Yeah. Where'd that go? And joining us live to discuss this further is former Obama campaign director, also mayoral candidate for Tucker, Georgia, and veteran Robin Biro and CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo. So, Robin, I, I have to start with you. Uh, what is your reaction to that? We were just talking to a lieutenant colonel uh, right before the break, uh, and obviously we see changes of command. Um, all the time. People are fired whenever a new commander in chief comes into office. But my question to you is, is this for political reasons? Is this a partisan decision? Is this what's in the best interest of the American people, in your opinion? Yes, certainly. Uh, let me speak to the political part of this first. Uh, these people were appointed based off of, of politics. I could argue very easily that Killian Conway was not qualified in any way, shape or form to serve on the board of, of the, the Air Force Academy. Uh, she's never served in the military. She has no experience. Uh, Sean Spicer himself had served. He still, I believe, is serving in, the, in either the Guard or the, or the reserves. Uh, but there are plenty of people who are more qualified than, than either one of these people to serve in these positions. Uh, and it is very typical, as you said, Miranda, for there to be a change of command upon a new administration. Uh, these people were controversial when they were first appointed because these were seen as very political and not qualified to serve in the positions that they were appointed to by then President Trump. So I'm not surprised at all that they're that they're leaving. But I would I do want to agree with the former guest, Dr. Hamada, uh, that I personally would like to see some bipartisanship, uh, some some representation from both parties for the whoever they were appoint to replace these individuals. Yeah, because, uh, again, the military, um, from what we've always been told, is supposed to be, you know, nonpartisan. And now I, I understand the commander in chief belongs to a certain party and has, you know, his or her say over that. Having said that, uh, Melissa, what, what is your take on this? And, and to furthermore, what uh, Robin had to say there. I actually watched Sean speak about this live last night. He was almost spitting fire live on TV discussing this. He was so upset. I feel like he, he took it personally because he served in the military. And even though he was a former press secretary for President Trump, he resigned very early on. And apparently this board really hasn't met since Biden took office. The last couple of months they haven't met. So they didn't know why, but they were trying to do something. Apparently this was coming down the pike. I will say it's not typical. Obama, uh, Trump kept Obama people that carried over into this board. They have to have both sides. We're becoming too partisan in both ways of the spectrum. And I understand that the Democrats hold all the cards right now, but 2022 is shortly around the corner. And we've got another uh, primary election coming up, and we have the midterms coming up, and the presidential election right. coming up. I'm telling you right now, this doesn't look good. The optics are not good. Yeah, I want to go to something else uh, that Sean Spicer had to say. Uh, he said, quote, instead of focusing on the stranded Americans left in Afghanistan, President Biden is trying to terminate the Trump appointees to the Naval Academy, West Point and Air Force Academy. This is something that he wrote uh, yesterday. Um, we've been you know, talking about the president. He's going to be unveiling. And I do want to get your reaction coming up after the break that that covid plan uh, to combat specifically the Delta variant, but just COVID in general. And as we mentioned, uh, he's talked about climate change. He was touring your neck of the woods, Melissa. A lot of people are seeing this kind of as a deterrent, if you will, political strategy to focus more on some of the domestic issues. Uh, Robin, what is your take on that? 
it's very common for for presidents to do that if if something's not looking good optically and as melissa just said optics do matter uh the situation there in afghanistan was not looking good i was relieved today to learn that the remaining people uh, the taliban has actually agreed to let them get on a flight and and evacuate that's great news i just i want them all home safely uh, but you know, we've got to focus on COVID. Uh, there's so many unvaccinated people and vaccine skeptics. We've got to address that and keep these people safe. And we are going to get to that in just a moment. But real quickly, before I move on to some other topics, as I mentioned at the top of the show, and Robin, I just, you know, as someone who served two tours in Afghanistan, we talked about it just the other day. Uh, the Taliban is saying that it's going to allow safe passage for around 200 Americans and other people who are not uh, Afghan citizens to be able to escape uh, via Kabul. Uh, how confident are you in the safety of those individuals being able to leave that country now? It's it's much needed. I still have very difficult a time trusting the Taliban, frankly, at their word. Uh, I don't trust them at all. I had issues with them when, when they were invited to Camp David to meet with then President Trump in January of 2018. I just hope to God that these individuals are safe and that they are given safe passage. It's critically important. We should not leave anyone behind, whether they are uh, American citizens or Afghans who helped us in this war on terrorism. Uh, we've got to get these people home safely. So that's my primary concern. And I'll be working directly with people still working on these evacuations. Um, we talked about that being uh, the primary concern, obviously, for you, having served. Um, we talked about um, the Biden administration kind of uh, changing focus, if you will, not to be not to anyone's surprise, but uh, some people kind of shaking their heads there um, as a vice president uh, made a trip out to California to stump for Governor Gavin Newsom with everything that's going on. Uh, it was all hugs. Uh, I did see the mask uh, taken off for that. Uh, but what's also uh, gaining headlines uh, Republican gubernatorial candidate Larry Elder, who's running in that recall, he's considered the top contender. Uh, well, he was not greeted with hugs. Uh, he was actually pummeled with eggs being thrown at him on the streets of Los Angeles, and that wasn't all. Take a look. <laughs> And reportedly, uh, that was not all that was seen. Apparently, there were some individuals, uh, one in particular who was wearing a mask, uh, believed to be, and this has not been confirmed, uh, to be that of a monkey face. Uh, two questions here, Melissa. Uh, should the vice president have gone out to California with everything that is going on to stump for, I, I understand that this is considered one of the most populous states in the union, but should she have gone there and what are the optics of her doing so? And then also, what is your reaction to the video that you just saw with Larry Elder, again, having eggs thrown at him? I think it's very interesting because the Democrats use the race card when it serves their narrative. And when it doesn't, they don't want to talk about it. If something like that had happened to Eric Adams, who's running for mayor, who happens to be African-American in New York, and he's a Democrat, if, if so something like that happened where it was a Republican screaming and, sh and throwing eggs with a monkey mask on at him, it, there would be riots and shootings and all kinds of mayhem in New York City if that would have happened. Because again, whenever it doesn't fit the narrative, then the Democrats don't discuss it. I think it was horrible that that happened. I don't know if that one was arrested or they found out what it is, but it absolutely, I think he needs more uh, security, to be honest with you. And he's gonna need a lot of security if he wins. And I hope that he does win because California is going downhill, straight downhill, almost like New York in the last couple of years, and they need some new leadership. And, and whether it's a Democrat or whether it's Republican, I think they need big change, and Larry Elder would be it. As far as Kamala Harris goes, she has tried hold to Hold that be thought, Melissa, hold that thought, and that's okay. my fault for asking such a long question. So I'm gonna have you respond to uh, the Vice President's visit. Coming up after the break, we'll also get Robin Byro to react as well. And we're gonna talk again about the President's plan uh, when it comes to tackling COVID. Again, that is expected to be released at 5 o'clock Eastern time. That's all coming up next. You're watching News On.